Lao Gai, Lao Gai Lao Gai the abbreviation for Laodong Gai Zhao, Lao Dong Gai Zhao Lao Dong Gai Zhao which means, reform through labor, is a slogan of the Chinese criminal justice system and has been used to refer to the use of penal labor and prison farms in the People's Republic of China PRC. Lao Gai is different from Lao Zhao, or re-education through labor, which was an administrative detention system for people who were not criminals but had committed minor offenses, and was intended to reform offenders into law-abiding citizens. Persons detained under Lao Zhao were detained in facilities that were separate from the general prison system of Lao Gai. Both systems, however, involved penal labor. In 1994 Lao Gai camps were renamed, prisons. However, Chinese criminal law still stipulates that prisoners able to work shall accept education and reform through labor. The existence of an extensive network of forced labor camps producing consumer goods for export to Europe and the United States became classified. Publication of information about China's prison system by Al Jazeera English resulted in its expulsion from China on May 7, 2012. The system is estimated to have caused tens of millions of deaths and has been likened to slavery by critics. Topic: History. During the 1950s and 1960s, Chinese prisons, similar to organized factories, contained large numbers of people who were considered too critical of the government or counter-revolutionary. However, many people arrested for political or religious reasons were released in the late 1970s at the start of the Deng Xiaoping reforms. In the 21st century, critics have said that Chinese prisons produce products for sale in foreign countries, with the profits going to the PRC government. Products include everything from green tea to industrial engines to coal dug from mines. According to James D. Seymour and Richard Anderson, the products made in Laogai camps comprise an insignificant amount of mainland China's export output and gross domestic product. They argue that the use of prison labor for manufacturing is not in itself a violation of human rights, and that most prisoners in Chinese prisons are serving time for what are generally regarded as crimes in the West. The West's criticism of the Laogai is based not only on the export of products made by forced labor, but also on the claims of detainees being held for political or religious violations, such as leadership of unregistered Chinese house churches. While the Laogai has attracted widespread criticism for the poor conditions in the prisons, Seymour and Anderson claim that reports are exaggerated, stating that, even at its worst, the Laogai is not, as some have claimed. The Chinese equivalent of the Soviet Gulag, structural changes following the downfall of socialism have reduced tax revenue to local governments, increasing pressure for local governments to supplement their income from elsewhere. At the same time, prisoners usually do not make a good workforce. The products manufactured by prison labor in China are of extremely low quality and have become unsaleable on the open market in competition with products made by non imprisoned paid labor. Harry Wu has written books, including Troublemaker and Lao Gai, that describe the system from the 1900s to the 1990s. Wu spent 19 years, from 1960 to 1979, as a prisoner in these camps, for having criticized the government while he was a young college student. After almost starving to death in the camps, he eventually moved to the United States as a visiting scholar in 1985. In 2008, the Laogai Research Foundation, a human rights NGO located in Washington, D.C., estimated that approximately 1,045 Laogai facilities were operating in China, and contained an estimated 500,000 to 2 million detainees. Conditions in Laogai camps The conditions that Laogai prisoners live in have been under scrutiny as the world learns more about them. The Chinese government has stated, Our economic theory hold the human being is the most fundamental productive force. Except for those who must be exterminated physically out of political consideration, human beings must be utilized as productive forces, with submissiveness as the prerequisite. The Laogai system's fundamental policy is forced labor as a means, while thought reform is our basic aim. Topic: <inaudible> <inaudible> Clothing. Unlike Laojiao inmates, Laogai criminals are issued clothing. Depending on the locale and its economic situation, the quality of clothing can vary significantly. 
Some prisoners may receive black or gray while others wear dark red or blue. Also depending on location, the clothing is available in different thicknesses. Commonly stamped on the uniforms are the Chinese characters for fan and lao gai meaning criminal and reform through labor, respectively. Also issued to the prisoners are a pair of shoes made of rubber or plastic. These minimums do not meet the needs of the prisoners, who must purchase underclothes, socks, hats, and jackets with their meager monthly earnings of 2.5 to 3 yuan 37 cents to 44 cents as of April 11, 2009. Jackets were rare in the Mao era and were commonly made from patches of old blankets rather than from original cloth. Washing clothes was also rare, but clothing supplies in prisons have improved since the mid Deng Zhang era. <inaudible> Food Food distribution has varied much through time, similar to its variation across the over 1,155 documented Lao Gai camps. One camp near Beijing distributes between 13.5 and 22.5 kilograms of food per person per month. This is about average. The food consists of sorghum and corn, which are ground into flour and made into bread or gruel. The prisoners of the Beijing camp also receive 3 ounces of cooking oil per month. Every two weeks, the prisoners receive a special meal of pork broth soup and white flour steamed buns. Important Chinese holidays, such as New Year's, National Day, and the Spring Festival, are celebrated with meat dumplings, an exception in an otherwise meatless diet. Food is distributed by one person per squad, which consists of about ten people. This prisoner, called the Jaban or duty prisoner, delivers the food to the rest of his group in large bowls on a cart. This often involves pushing the cart a great distance to the place where the others are working. Each day prisoners receive gruel, bread, and a watery vegetable soup made from the cheapest vegetables available. Some camps have reported two meals a day, while others allow three. Food is rationed according to rank and productive output, which is believed to provide motivation to work. During the Mao era, food in prisons was very scarce, not only because of a nationwide famine during the Great Leap Forward 1959 but also because of the harsher rules. Since little food was available, prisoners would scavenge anything they came across while working. Cases were documented of prisoners eating field mice, crickets, locusts, toads, grapevine worms, grasshoppers, insect larvae and eggs, and poisonous snakes. Also, many inmates would steal produce from the fields they worked on, smuggling vegetables back to their barracks. In Jabiango, Gansu, around 2,500 out of 3,000 prisoners died of starvation between 1960 and 1962, with some survivors resorting to cannibalism. Nutrition in the camps was a big problem, especially during the early 1950s through the 1960s, in the early years of the PRC People's Republic of China. Before the CCP Chinese Communist Party took control, hunger was rarely used to control prisoners. Early leaders of the CCP realized the power of withholding food from rebellious prisoners and, until recently, this practice was very common. Since the early 1990s, some camps in the coastal regions of eastern China have improved the quality and amount of food. <laughs> Living quarters and sanitation The living quarters, commonly referred to as barracks in most Laogai literature, were relatively primitive. Most had floors made of cement or wood, but some were of only straw and or earth. The latrine was a bucket, and no furniture was provided. The prisoners slept on the floor in a space 30 cm wide, with 10 people per room. New prisoners were forced to sleep nearest to the latrine while more senior ones slept near the opposite wall. Baths and showers were very rare and often not mentioned at all in memoirs. The only form of washing was the use of a water basin, which was only slightly less rare. This was ineffective because the entire squad used the same water. Basic essentials, such as a toothbrush and toothpaste, toilet paper, soap, and towels were not provided, prisoners had to spend their wages to acquire them. Prisoners were known to have spread manure, both human and animal, and been required to eat immediately without being able to wash their hands. The sleeping quarters were surrounded on all sides by a wall. This wall is about 20 feet high and topped with electrical fencing. There were also sentry towers on each corner. 
Outside this wall was 40 feet of empty space, followed by another wall, similar to the first but larger. Topic: <laughs> Disease and pests. The Laogai camps were infested with many types of pests. Bed bugs were so numerous that at night they sometimes moved in swarms. This behavior earned them the Laogai nickname of tanks or tank. They sucked the blood of the prisoners, leaving little red welts all over their bodies. These welts itched, and severe cases led to inmates scratching their skin raw, leading to dangerous infections. Another common pest was lice. Some prisoners were known to eat them to supplement their meager diet. No insecticide or pesticides were used in the camps. The prisoner Zhang Xinliang wrote that, The parasites on a single inmate's underpants would be as numerous as the words on the front page of a newspaper. He noted fleas would be so numerous that they would turn his quilt purplish black with their droppings. Roundworms were also a common threat to the prisoners' health, especially in Laogai farms, where human excrement was used as fertilizer. Along with a poor diet came many diet related diseases. Beriberi, edema, scurvy, and pellagra were the most common, due to lack of vitamins. Other health problems caused by the lack of healthy food included severe diarrhea or constipation from the lack of oil and fiber. These two were often left untreated and, added to the continuous strain of 12 hours of manual labor, weakened the immune system. Eventually, death followed many of these conditions. Two diseases rampant among the populations of these camps were tuberculosis and hepatitis. Highly contagious, these were also often left untreated until it was too late. Each morning, the cadre of the camp decided who was sick enough to stay in the barracks and miss the day of work. Many prisoners were forced to work when they were ill. Mental illness used to be very common during the Mao era, when prisoners had to spend two hours each evening being indoctrinated. The brainwashing that occurred over the amount of time people were imprisoned could be so intense that they were driven to insanity and, in many cases, suicide. <laughs> Reforming through labor Forced labor defined Laogai prison camps. The following is a description of an average day in the prison camp Tuanhe Farm by Harry Wu. He spent 19 years in a Laogai prison camp like this one. Prisoners are roused from bed at 5.30 a.m., and at 6 a.m. the jaban from the kitchen wheels in a cart with tubs of corn gruel and cornbread. At 7 a.m. the company public security cadre captain comes in, gathers all the prisoners together, and authorizes any sick prisoners to remain in the barracks. Once at the worksite, the captain delegates production responsibilities. At lunchtime the jaban arrives pulling a handcart with a large tub of vegetable soup, two hunks of cornbread for each prisoner, and a large tube of drinking water. After about 30 minutes, work is resumed until the company chief announces quitting time in the evening. Generally the prisoners return to the barracks at about 6.30 p.m. Upon return it is once again a dinner of cornbread, corn gruel, and vegetable soup. At 7.30 p.m., the two-hour study period begins. At 9.30 p.m., no matter what the weather, all prisoners gather together outside the barracks for roll call and a speech from the captain. At around 10 p.m., everyone goes to bed. During the night no lights are allowed and no one is allowed to move about. One must remain in one's assigned sleeping place and wait until 5.30 a.m. the next morning before getting up, when the whole cycle begins again. Quota filling was a big part of the inmates' lives in Laogai camps. Undershooting or overshooting the target productivity governs their quality of life. Not making the number may result in solitary confinement or loss of food privileges. Generally, food rations are cut by 10-20% if a worker fails to meet the standard. Some prisoners excel and are able to do more than what is required of them. They sometimes receive extra or better quality food. It has been argued that this extra food is not worth the extra calories burned to be more productive, so many prisoners choose to do the minimum with minimum effort, thereby saving as much energy as possible. Working conditions in Laogai camps are substandard. 
Investigators from the Laogai Research Foundation have confirmed sites where prisoners minus bestus and other toxic chemicals with no protective gear, work with batteries and battery acid with no protection for their hands, tan hides while standing naked in vats filled three feet deep with chemicals used for the softening of animal skins, and work in improperly run mining facilities where explosions and other accidents are a common occurrence. Career preparation has historically been used to justify forced labor prison systems around the world. In China, although this argument was used, career preparation was minimal until recently. Following release, the skills acquired within the Laogai prison i.e. ditch digging or manure spreading do not often lead to desirable employment. Inmates who entered the Laogai system with marketable skills were often assigned jobs utilizing these skills within the prison complex. Doctors, for example, were doctors within the Laogai camp often receiving preferential treatment, larger amounts of food, similar to the cadre, and a bed. Inmates rarely leave with any new skills unless the training fits the camp's enterprising needs. More recently, however, programs have been introduced to train prisoners in useful trades. While there are many types of Laogai complexes, most enterprises are farms, mines, or factories. There are, according to the Chinese government, approximately 200 different kinds of Laogai products that are exported to international markets. A quarter of China's tea is produced in Laogai camps, 60% of China's rubber vulcanizing chemicals are produced in a single Laogai camp in Shengyang. One of the largest steel pipe factories in the country is a Laogai camp. Quote, One camp alone, Zhangride, harvests more than 22,000 metric tons of grain every year. Doolin County prisoners have planted over 400,000 trees. The conditions in these camps are considered extremely harsh by most of the world's cultures. However, the Chinese government considers Laogai to be effective in controlling prisoners and furthering China's economy. According to Mao Zedong, the Laogai facilities are one of the violent component parts of the state machine. Laogai facilities of all levels are established as tools representing the interests of the proletariat and the people's masses and exercising dictatorship over a minority of hostile elements originating from exploiter classes." Activist Harry Wu has catalyzed the debate on the issue of Laogai, which is now becoming a more visible issue worldwide. <laughs> Number of deaths. Writing in the Black Book of Communism, which describes the history of repressions by communist states, Jean-Louis Margolin claims that perhaps 20 million died in the prison system. Professor R.J. Rummel puts the number of forced labor demicides at 15,720,000, excluding all those collectivized, ill-fed and clothed peasants who would be worked to death in the fields. Harry Wu puts the death toll at 15 million. According to Jean Louis Margolin, during the campaign to suppress counter revolutionaries, the harshness of the official prison system reached unprecedented levels, and the mortality rate until 1952 was certainly in excess of 5% per year, and reached 50% during six months in Guangxi. In Shaanxi, more than 300 people died per day in one mine. Torture was commonplace and the suppression of revolts, which were quite numerous, resulted in veritable massacres. One Chinese priest died after being interrogated for over 100 hours. Of the 20,000 inmates who worked in the oil fields of Yenchang, several thousand were executed. In Mao, the unknown story, the Mao biographer Young Chong and historian John Halliday estimate that perhaps 27 million people died in prisons and labor camps during Mao Zedong's rule. They claim that inmates were subjected to back-breaking labor in the most hostile wastelands, and that executions and suicides by any means like diving into a wheat chopper were commonplace. Other information In 2003, the word, Lao Gai, entered the Oxford English Dictionary. It entered the German Duden in 2005, and French and Italian dictionaries in 2006. In 2008, Harry Wu opened the Laogai Museum in Washington, D.C., calling it the first-ever United States Museum to directly address human rights in China. See also 
Xinjiang re-education camps Extermination through labor Gulag, the equivalent of Laogai in the Soviet Union Harry Wu Human rights in China Jean Pasqualina Kualiso, the equivalent of Laogai in North Korea Laogai Museum Laogai Research Foundation Military units to aid production, the equivalent of Laogai in Cuba Nazi concentration camps Penal colony Penal system in China Re-education camp Vietnam, the equivalent of Laogai in Vietnam Spock prison, the equivalent of Laogai in the People's Socialist Republic of Albania <laughs>